Welcome to this room. Even as we know God's presence in Jesus Christ, our Lord. My name is Pamela Chisholm, and I shall be interviewing Dr. Coral Warmington, founder and president of Faith and Deeds Ministries, a faith-based, non-governmental ministry originating from Jamaica. This interview is being conducted on behalf of Greenbrier Baptist Church and their senior pastor, Reverend Artemia Tamayo Bates Mendoza. Dr. Warmington, as I intimated previously, hails from Jamaica, West Indies, and her marriage blessed her with a daughter and a son. And later, she adopted another daughter, both of whom gave her grandsons. And as you can imagine, she is bursting with pride over them all. She is a medical practitioner, 36 years, currently a Christian medical missionary in Liberia, West Africa. She participated in short-term missions since 2006 and in 2011 God sent her and her then mission partner Marion Stewart to serve full time. From a personal standpoint, Doc is my sister, my younger sister, and I admire her, the calling on her life and what God is doing through her. No, Dr. Warmington. Welcome. Thank you very much. Good day, everyone. We are delighted to have you with us and that you would take the time to share the good work of the kingdom. Amen. <laughs> I should like to ask you about the pandemic because it is currently big news, you know. It's everywhere, all over the world. It's affecting this world in a, a destructive and devastating manner. So as a medical professional, how has this affected you physically and spiritually? Well, I'm glad that you mentioned both physically and spiritually because I'm a Christian medical missionary, as mentioned before, and physically, you know, when I think about it, um, Liberia, when I was there a couple months ago, um, there was not much cases there. And as a matter of fact, the people had initially followed the protocol of having people six feet away and having on their mask and so forth. But after a while, when they realized that not, very, not much people was being diagnosed as being positive for corona, everything and everybody was worshiping and doing their thing. Spiritually, um, I find that I just have to pray for them because if I, if I put on the mask and follow the protocol, they think that I'm like separated from them and then I'm not able to minister to them as I would like to. So I spend a lot of time in prayer on my knees. Okay. <laughs> so um, you just gave us an idea of what it is like during the pandemic. Uh, so were there lockdowns? You mentioned the mask, uh, the gloves, um, and the normalcy of it. In your particular area where you lived and operated, what was it like for the Liberians? Oh, well, it's when I came to the U.S. that I really saw what the protocol supposed to be is lockdowns and the separation and the mask. And nothing like it is taking place in Liberia. Everybody is just hugging each other and they're in the church and on the, in the marketplace and they're doing their thing as if it doesn't exist at all. Uh, hence the reason to pray for them. Oh, yes. Mm. I see, I see. So, Based on that, I, w I intended to ask you about your spiritual nourishment. 
because a lot of us here in the United States aren't really nourished spiritually in the separation. So how are you spiritually nourished in okay. the pandemic? In the pandemic, because um, the librarian do not, not see it as being anything that would affect them in a, a physical or spiritual way. You have the church just continuing in as if it doesn't exist. So I'm able to attend church every single Sunday. And, you know, even after church, um, I'm built up from my sister's sermon um, that I've listened to on coach, um, coach preacher. I really enjoy that. And I'm really built up spiritually by that. Plus, I attend church every single day. So we can say, uh, Doc is not starving. No, I'm not. Uh, how then, seeing that we're speaking about pandemic, relate to us the difference between this pandemic and the Ebola? Oh, the Ebola was really rough on the people. Many, many, many died and died. And the, the, that is the reason I think that they treat the pandemic as if it is nothing. It's just like a flu to them or a cold. They don't really see it as a big thing. And so um, the Ebola is, was a big thing to them, while the pandemic is not, the, the coronavirus is not. So, okay, so this is as if it is nothing compared to the previous uh, pandemic that rushed through the country. How did you survive then? Because I recall while the other missionaries left the country, you did not. No. <laughs> I, w I was thinking of moving out, Marin, and I had everything organized to move with the rest of the missionary, but the Lord spoke to us through his word, and he said, we need to stay with the people. And we stayed with them, and as a matter of fact, when we went out to the hospital, you know, they would say to me, I mean, like the CEO of the hospital, he says that, um, because we see you guys here with us, that means that we will survive this thing. So, you know, it was really, really, um, and, you know, while we were even at home, we were able to give of what you have given to us to bless us during the time of the Ebola. We were able to give others who were in quarantine and didn't have any food. Therefore, um, because you were obedient to God in remaining when you got the word from him, your impact on the people of Liberia was uh, different than, say, the other missionaries that left. Oh, the impact was really great. I mean, I even thought, I mean, as the Ebola, the sickness was moving closer and closer to the headquarters. I, I, I was very frightened, you know, so I spoke to my sister and she said, remember that God says that you will see the end of this. That means you will survive. And so we just continued the work and continued in faith that God will take care of us. And we saw at the end of it, we give thanks for that. Hmm. I, I need to ask you another question relating to this pandemic. You mentioned that when you left, there were few people, comparatively speaking, that were affected by it. Have you checked to see how it is, well, progressing is not a kind word when it comes to the pandemic, but do you know how it is affecting the people in your county right now? Well, I would really have to go online and to check that out myself. Okay, okay. But it's relatively few in the country. When still. I was here. Okay, okay. Okay, um, as a trained medical professional, how do you see the fruits of your labor in Liberia? Wow, <laughs> I mean, that is what is keeping me because of the fruit. Um, you know, we went there first and we started in Brown County, that is in the central part of Africa. 
and there um, we worked through the hospital setting that is the Phoebe Hospital and God would send us out to other areas like the, the, the Methodist Hospital in Nimba County which is the county next to Bong and in the capital we also ministered in the hospital there. Um, Elwa it is called. And we saw people, oh, the doctors were few, the nurses are the ones that runs things. And so we noticed that there were very little care for the people. So we started what we call customer care service. As God would see the people, so they must see the people through Christ. And man, they got so excited. Many of them were able to lift up their shoulders when they realized that they are servants of the living God. And they were moved and you know, there were even this lady that did a class at Phoebe, she just went out and she started cheering everywhere she went. Customer service, customer service, customer service. You got to do what Christ tells you to do to take care of your people. So she was very excited. There was a doctor who, even after the program, came to us and said, Could you share Christ with us? Mm. And we would sit with him and go through the gospel and let him know who Christ is. And so, you know, the people has been running with this running all over their homes, their whatever their children, with children would carry to the other children in the school, etc. So I'm very, very excited about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I also recall that not only did you go into the hospital, but I thought you had a program for babies. Oh yes, uh, a prayer. A gift and a prayer, we call it. And so we would take, um, we go with the nurses that professes to be Christians, and we would take gifts to the, the mothers that have just given birth, and we'd pray with them and pray over the baby, and we'd give them gifts. Because in that way, they are exposed to the living God and how kind he is. So we did that. Wonderful impact on um, from birth right on throughout the community. Thank you, Doc. In, nine, in 2019, excuse me, you mentioned crossing the border of Liberia to go into another country that was predominantly Muslim. Would you like to share that with us? Oh yes, uh, we have really been a street minister through a number a lot of cl clinics around us and one of these clinics come through the Methodist Hospital in Nimbo and so we they have an extension of their hospital in Guinea which is a uh, which speaks French and we they decided to take us there and we decided to take the program there too. Unfortunately it was just for a day and what we did really ministered to the heart of the people. So that although it was very difficult for us to go across the border, you know, not having anywhere to stay, the cost and everything to implement the program there, it was it didn't seem feasible. But the response was that the people were really looking for us to come back there and to continue the program because they were very excited about it. And because of that, we went into prayer and asked the Lord, please help us that we may reach out to other countries in Africa and in the world. In Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. So, so um, having made that impact in just one day, are, you are praying that you can not only go back to that particular country, but the others that border uh, Liberia and beyond. Beyond it is yes. right. Border it and beyond, as far as the Lord can, would take us. Yes, yes. I'm looking forward. Okay. And you need the funds to be able to do oh, that. Oh, yes. yes. It cannot be done. Okay, okay. And you, you got the feedback through the Methodist Hospital that they really appreciated one day of training. Just one oh, day. Oh my goodness. 
The needs are great. Yes, the needs are great. Okay. Many of the uh, U.S. churches during this uh, COVID pandemic resorted to platforms, the internet, and using these uh, the technology to minister to their members, uh, to reach and outreach. And so, how does this affect? your ministry and reaching your people? Well, I'll be frank, at this time it is not a problem because in the country we are still able to do one-on-one -on -one impact, can be in their faces. The churches are open, all the churches are open, ready to receive us. But we know that in the future, their technology will have to come and therefore, with the directors, we are prepared for that because they are fine people, they are gifted people, and they will help me. Because, you know, going back, you know, it's like being alone. And, um, you know, so the directors are really, really important to the future of this ministry. Well, listening to you uh, saying that in the future, well, not just in the future, but right now, you still do face-to-face. -face. Um, I was thinking about Jesus and his disciples, that they're still walking from village to village, <laughs> <laughs> uh, stepping in their slippers through the woods, on the dry roads, uh, going to the people to touch them and to uh, speak to them and to baptize them. That is still being done in Liberia, yes. step by step, touch by touch, word by word. Yes, that's still being done. But I want to tell you as well that uh, since Doc has been in the United States, I've been teasing her because she has been using the platforms more and uh, she now has a groupie <laughs> learning how to connect with uh, friends and supporters on the internet. So it is also step by step, day by day, in learning the technology and being able to use it to reach uh, others for Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, and you touch on the subject about going forward technologically. Um, tell me about the future of Faith and Deeds. Well, Faith and Deeds is much bigger than myself or Marianne. You know, um, you know Marianne, she has left the ministry now. She's now married and in the United States. But I will be going back. And God has called me to go back. And one of the first things we have to deal with our house that is faith and his ministry. And there it involves mobilizing of the, 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 the directors that are there. God remind me to remind them that they have been given gifts and talents that they can use to build up this ministry. So we have um, um, the director of administration, um, Jacqueline Ansel. She has been very shy and behind the scenes, but now she has Recognize, she said she's willing to step up for the Lord and to do his will if she has to be in public. Same thing for the executive director, which is my brother-in-law, um, Lester Chisholm. You know, he has been always been behind the scene and so forth. And he loves it there. He loves to just keep working for people. But he has been called forward now and he has to take charge. He is in charge of all the legal papers and the accounting and all of that. That is some really heavy ministry. We have Dr. Jack Sork, who is the, the medical director. He has been taking people all over the world and he is ready to take people to Liberia. And um, if, well, we'll come to that, but you have the, the consultant to the board, um, Dr. Gaynor. He, very good. He has been exposed to a lot of the Af African continent and he is ready to um, share with us and to, con to give us this consult as what to 
do, when to do, how to do. And you thank God for it. And then you have this local pastor, Dr. Joshua, who is the um, mission director. Oh, when I met him, just as Marion is about to leave, God placed him in, in the place where he is. He just loved um, the, the ministry work that we do. He said it's so practical and he knows almost all the churches and pastors in Liberia. And so we have been going from place to place with his instruction and he tells persons ahead of time and we are, we are just moving. And I thank God for that because you know, as president, I can only follow what God tells me to do. Yes. And that's exactly what I'm doing with Jesus. Amen. Amen. You know, I would like to share something that uh, Doc perhaps wouldn't share with you, but uh, the vehicle that she has in Liberia is um, in need of a lot of repair. She has had it quite a few years, and the church that donated it was so kind. And um, because it is in need of repair and not really drivable, she has been on bikes, on the back of bikes and bicycles, <laughs> and she would send pictures of her on these vehicles. Uh, it's just so funny to see her, but nothing will stop her from getting to people who need to hear the word of God. Nothing. Thank so, <laughs> that's true. the uh, future of um, faith and deeds. Uh, that was just one aspect I spoke about. <laughs> because you have the mobilization, when we talk about the mobilization of the um, directors, now we're going to the mobilization of the local people. And we mentioned Dr. Joshua that knows the people. He is a, an assistant pastor and he loves the ministry. The, the ministry work that we do. He said it's so practical and he's very excited. And with that excitement, many people, even when we went out to Zedru, we need deep, deep jungle, they said that they wanted us to come back because they wanted really go out and to do this ministry to which God has called them to. So we are very excited. And then we, the, the last one is mobilizing the people here and around us. You know, to come into Africa, you're from America, from the Caribbean, wherever in the world, uh, you just have to contact Dr. Jack Sorg. His email is, Doc, I mean, Jack Sorg um, at aol.com. Thank you for your help. <laughs> yes, he's just ready to take you whenever. As a matter of fact, he has a trip prepared for January. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank you, Doc. Well, I think we are just about finished with the interview. And I would like to thank Doc for all that she has shared with us. And before I close, I would like to pass, it back, pass the microphone back to her, so to speak and have her tell you thanks. She wants to say thank you to all who have supported her along the way. Well, you know, Faith and Deeds is over um, 15 years. And over this time, we, uh, we only exist because of you. And we want to say thank you. Thank you for your support. We could not exist without it. And you know, there are things that goes on from day to day that we need to encourage you to continue your support because like for example, as um, um, Pamela mentioned, the car, it is in a, a, a worn state right now. And you know, Jack was there with a team recently and we had to go deep into the jungle and after that the, the car just had to stay in the garage for a while. And you know, we want people to come to the center but we, uh, we, we have to set up or improve the solar system, and that costs. So, you know, the day-to-day -day running of faith and this ministry. So I thank you for your support, and I ask you that you will continue and to help us. Yes. Well, thank you again, Doc, and I too want to thank you for being here. 
I would like to also appeal to you on behalf of Faith and Deeds Ministries. Faith and Deeds Ministry. Greenbrier Baptist Church has been working with Faith and Deeds in cooperation with Faith and Deeds for a few years. And I should like to encourage you, if God has touched your heart and you would like to contribute to the ministry, that you may do so through Greenbrier Baptist Church. You may send your donation to them and they will then distribute that uh, contribution to the ministry. They won't touch it. <laughs> and uh, she will benefit. The people of Liberia will benefit, and of course, God's kingdom will be glorified. May God bless you and keep you. Thank you so much. Thank you, God. Thank you.